There used to be just six Star Wars movies, and a host of media about the rest of the timeline. That changed when Disney took over Star Wars, declaring that all the extra material was now part of the Legends. The Legends aren't canon to the franchise, but Disney has been taking pages from them. In this video, we're going to take a look at a major way in which Disney has changed Star Wars. A big part of the sequel trilogy was the marriage between Han and Leia, but how did that happen in the first place? For most people, that wouldn't be much of a question at all. The two of them were obviously in a relationship during the original trilogy, and since there's a time jump between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens, it's not a stretch to assume that they would have gotten married at some point. But the whole fun of what is now known as Legends is filling in every gap and leaving no stone unturned. Dave Wolverton's The Courtship of Princess Leia used to be the canon story of how Han finally put a ring on Leia. Following the end of Return of Jedi and the defeat of the Empire, Han and Leia are on the rise. Fox. Leia decides to offer her hand in marriage to the prince of a powerful galactic coalition in order to gain their alliance to her new republic. Han is driven to basically kidnap her and try to win her love, while the prince is joined by Luke Skywalker in trying to save her. Through the course of the adventures that follow, Han and Leia come to realize that they really do love each other, and the two get married at the end of the novel. As great a story as that is, Disney has commissioned a new novel that goes against the grain. Disney has been supporting their Star Wars movies with a range of TV shows and novels. Their newest one offers a whole new story of how Han and Leia wound up getting married, which unfortunately consigns the courtship into the annals of legends for good. The Princess and the Scoundrel comes to us by famed YA author Beth Rivas, and she sets her novel just hours after the end of the Battle of Endor. While Han and Leia are the focus of the book, they're even in the name, the fact that this novel follows the ending of Return of the Jedi so closely makes it an extended epilogue to the original trilogy. Cutting off the head of an evil empire doesn't make the empire automatically disappear. While the rebels plan their next moves to consolidate their hold over the empire's old territory, Han interrupts the strategic meeting to pop the question to Leia. Alas, she says, got you there for a second. Of course, she says yes. The rest of the novel covers their marriage on Endor and the honeymoon they take in space. That's pretty romantic. That sounds like a downgrade in excitement? Well, based on other books that Revis has written, it's safe to say that The Princess and the Scoundrel will have its fair share of excitement, even if it isn't quite the swashbuckling space pirate adventure that the courtship of Princess Leia featured. But Star Wars has a lot of excitement in the movies and most of its associated media, and we already know that Han and Leia's marriage will lead to some serious tragedies going forward. We can't help but appreciate the idea of a book that's a little quieter and builds on the realities of the couple's courtship. The movies didn't even get much time to explore the romantic dynamic between the two, and that's something Revis will definitely put front and center in her book. In general, the sequel trilogy has focused a lot more on the characters of the story. The new core trio received a lot more development in those movies than the original trio put together. Not to mention shows like Obi-Wan and The Mandalorian, which focus on specific characters. Disney's take on the Star Wars universe is very character-driven, so it makes sense for them to have character-driven stories in their novels too. Now, Star Wars is a billion dollar franchise, and many of you may be discovering for the first time that there are books. There's a lot of great stuff in the Legends line, but that isn't canon anymore, so we're directing you to some great novels you can read that are actually canon to the Star Wars universe. While the Disney era has focused a lot on what happened after the original trilogy, how about a series about the Star Wars universe that goes back to before the prequels? The High Republic series is a whole sub-franchise in Star Wars, mostly taking place around 200 years years before the prequels. We see the Jedi Order at its strongest, working in armies to tackle various challenges. You could totally get lost in the annals of the High Republic, and now would be a good time for it, as rumors abound that there may just be a High Republic show. Moving into the prequel era, many of the fans of those movies have been annoyed that Anakin and Obi-Wan have received a lot of love in the Star Wars movies, but no one seems to care about Padme. Well, that's what the Queen trilogy is all about. It shows more of Padme's side of the story before and during the prequel trilogy. Plus, you get to have Natalie Portman's face on your bookshelf. Finally, Star Wars Resistance Reborn gives us an in-depth look at the activities of the sequel trilogy Rebels. Poe Dameron is the focus of the book, and we get to see more about his past as well as the things he did off-screen with the Rebels. Next, in other news, Obi-Wan Kenobi might be by. Speaking of all the Star Wars novels, one that was recently released is called Padawan. As the title might suggest, 
suggest we flash back to a teenaged Obi-Wan Kenobi, apprenticing under his master Qui-Gon Jinn. At one point, Obi-Wan has a conversation with a fellow Jedi about kissing other people. His inner thoughts are pretty confused on the subject. He thinks about kissing boys or kissing girls, or maybe he doesn't want to kiss anyone at all. The only thing he knows for sure is that any sort of kissing would be a betrayal of his oath to the Jedi, though we wish he'd been able to pass that lesson a little better to his own Padawan. Overall, it's hard to say whether Obi is truly bi or if he's in an experimental mood. He's a teenager after all. On the other hand, the fact that he's able to set those feelings aside for the Jedi might suggest he's aromantic and or asexual. It's tough to get these answers out of a teenager, but writer Kirsten White has certainly found an interesting angle to explore here. Up next, we have bad news for fans of Knights of the Old Republic. One of the Star Wars projects that got shunted into Legends territory was the Knights of the Old Republic series. It comprised three video games, two of which were RPGs, and then there was an MMO. Fans have been waiting a long time for a remake of this series, but it looks like the wait has gotten indefinitely longer. The remake of the first game was announced last year at a PlayStation 5 showcase. It spent three years in development, but two of its key directors have now been let go. Those firings have caused the game's development to grind to a halt. It hasn't been cancelled, but the projected 2022 release date has now been pushed way back to 2025. This is a blow, but not a fatal one. To those who are hopeful for this remake, let's hope the force remains with the developers. Finally, the Andor show supposedly has major links to the rest of the Star Wars franchise. When Cassie and Andor was introduced in Star Wars Rogue One, it seemed like he was a minor character, whose biggest role in the universe was helping to steal the Death Star plans. That's all going to change when Andor hits Disney Plus in just over a month. Supposedly, a scene in the show will see him going undercover into the assembly line for the Empire's various objects of doom. There, he will have his first real encounter with the Death Star, and he'll also witness the brutal slavery that the workers experience in these factories. We can imagine that the scene will figure into the overall story of the show. It explores how Cassie and Andor joined the Rebels in its early days, and scenes like this one will probably help cement the motivation of the Rebels to overthrow the Empire. Andor was the most idealistic one of the Rogue One crew, so it'll be exciting to see how he came upon these ideals in the first place. That's it for today's video. Are you excited for The Princess and the Scoundrel? Or did you prefer the Legends approach to Han and Leia's future? And let us know what your favorite pieces of Legends and post-Disney Star Wars side content is. Light up the comments section like it's a lightsaber. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.